of November 4, 2020, the CDC recommends the following PPE for providing care to known or suspected COVID-19 patients. An N95 respirator or comparable respiratory protection, such as a reusable respirator, isolation gown, eye protection, and gloves. Multiple hospitals and healthcare facilities have reported current and anticipated shortages of N95 respirators. This is due to supply chain issues and patient surges that we are seeing related to the pandemic. To address this concern, the CDC has released a set of guidelines for optimizing N95 use during the COVID-19 pandemic. If your agency has a shortage of N95s or if they're not available, the CDC says it's acceptable to use a surgical mask instead of an N95. You should wear this PPE when you're in the room of a patient with COVID-19, even if you're in the room while the patient is temporarily out of their room due to a medical procedure. Universal masking, as I mentioned before, is the practice of having everyone wear a face covering. In healthcare settings, healthcare personnel would wear a respirator or a surgical mask while patients and visitors could wear a cloth face covering. Universal masking has been associated with a significantly lower rate of infection among healthcare personnel. So it's critical that you wear a mask or respirator for all patient encounters, even if you don't suspect that they have COVID-19. A, a large number of infected individuals can be asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic and could be shedding virus. Your use of a mask for your entire shift and for all patient encounters will significantly lower your risk of exposure. Universal masking can also be implemented in community settings, meaning that everyone wears a face covering when around others. There are multiple epidemiological studies that indicate that universal masking is one of the most important interventions to prevent community spread of COVID-19. With that, I'm going to turn that over to Jill. Thank you, Terry. Today, I'm going to review several aspects of the reuse and disinfection related to N95 respirators and other types of masks, including the CDC strategies and resources like the one that you see on this slide. I strongly recommend that you check the CDC site often for updated information and resources related to COVID-19 and PPE that can be extremely helpful to you and your organization. As COVID-19 has persisted over the months in 2020, most healthcare systems and organizations have found themselves reviewing their inventory and use of PPE with a strong eye on the N95 masks. When reviewing PPE supplies, the CDC separates out the strategies based on supply availability and the expected shortages. The first of those is called conventional capacity strategies. This refers to the strategies that we should be incorporating into our everyday practices. This includes using N95 masks responsibly all the time for those patients indicated to actually need it. When performing fit testing, we wanna ensure these masks aren't being wasted and that we are using face shields to cover the N95 mask to prevent them from splashes with blood and body fluids. Face shields are probably not something that we were used to using before COVID-19 as widely as we are now, but they have become very useful as a part of our PPE standards to protect PPE from the contamination and it helps us to extend their use. Contingency capacity is what we should be doing when, when we are expecting a shortage. This is probably where all of us were back in the spring when we didn't really know what we were gonna have with PPE inventories. We were expecting shortages. We were quickly developing our plans for if we did have shortages. This is also when OSHA put out guidance that allowed us to temporarily suspend the annual fit testing requirement. This assisted us with conserving N95s there's also been additional guidance to extend the use of N95 safely by using them on multiple patients and encounters. Crisis capacity is when we have known shortages. And I think we have, most of us have been here as well. When in crisis capacity, not only is the healthcare facility seeing a shortage of PPE, but likely there is a national shortage of some items. The facility may choose to use respirators beyond their recommended shelf life there also may be processes developed to reuse N95s for multiple encounters on multiple patients. This process requires education on how to don and off safely and to not contaminate yourself when doing so. A careful assessment will be made by the facility to ensure that N95 masks are being used appropriately and for the tasks that require them. And just a quick note about gowns. 
At times, we've seen various gowns in short supply over the past year, and some facilities have chosen to review their program where different types of gowns are used in place of disposable gowns. And if you are gonna review that type of a gown program where you view launderable gowns as an option, just look at several considerations before you start to make that kind of a decision in advance. So determine if the rooms have a collection bin or a cart already in the room. Know who's gonna pull that type of linen or gowns from the room. Where are you gonna take that linen? Do you have a chute? Do you have a cart? How much linen will you actually need in your system to keep the units adequately stocked? You'll need more than one gown per room or per patient in the system so that you have enough to keep the unit stocked all the time while the linen is carted off to wherever it's gonna be cleaned and, and it comes back and it gets stocked. The most important aspect of any type of new program, whether it's gowns, it's masks, or anything that is going on during this pandemic is that every unit may be a little bit different and that's okay. The key consideration is that we ask the team members who are doing the work and understand the barriers to ensure that we create the safest process for all of our frontline team members.